everyone. On this Code With Me session, we're going to talk about tables, how to create tables in HTML5, and how to use CSS to style those tables. So, tables are made up of rows and columns. And just like this picture here, this is kind of how a table would look in HTML. So, this is a 3x3. Three three. We've got three uh, columns and three rows. So, the rows are going to be the across the horizontal plane here and then the columns are going to be up and down. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, table and let's go ahead and try and recreate this table in HTML. So in order to start creating a table you need to use the table tag and this acts as the box that all of the data will be fitting into. Okay, so from the table, we're going to create a TR, which will become our first row. And then within that row, so what we've done here is we've created this line, okay? From within the table row, we need to create three columns. So that's gonna be three sets of opening TD and closing TD. And TD stands for table data. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create one and control C and V to paste it. And then I'm going to just put the word content just like they did here. Content and content. Okay, so you'll see my table so far. I have some styling left over in here. So um, I have like a border set on my table and a background color. And I have some Arial font supplied. So this is my first row and you'll see it matches the three here. So if I want to turn this now from, because this is just a one row by three column, if I want to turn this into a three by three, I'm just going to copy that. Now that becomes the second row and that becomes the third row. So I'm going to put um, row one content, row two content, and row three content. Okay, so this is an example of how you can create a three by three table. It's again, it's very simple. We can, we can uh, make our tables more complicated by using um, other things such as table headings. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's say I want to create um, this that says TD across the top. So what I can do there's actually a couple of things I can do. Number one, I can use um, special tags to kind of group things together. So if I use the T head tag, this is just going to kind of designate this information as heading. And it's and I'm going to use my table rows. And that's just going to be one table row. And then instead of TD, I'm going to use a TH. So I'm going to put three THs to match my three columns here and I'm going to put the TD oh that's going to it's going to confuse them here I'm just going to go like this is it going to is it going to work it's like what the heck are you doing here all right I'm just going to put it like this then So <clears throat> you'll notice with my with my heading, my TH tags, these are going to be styled a little different. And like I said, I ha already have some um, some styling in here. So what I've done is I have styled my TH to a font of Arial, a font size of 1.5M, and I changed the color white. But by default, THs when you use them in your HTML, um, the TH will be like bold. So it's not necessarily going to be bigger font, but it kind of acts as like an H1 tag, H2 tag in the fact that it will be bold. Okay, so those are coming across bold. And then my, um, my regular TDs, I have styled a font family of Arial, font size 1.2, and text align center. Oh, that's the other thing about THs. Those are by default are text align centered. They're supposed to be the the headings for your table, and you can also use them across the side as well if you want to do that. Okay, 
All right, so what else can we do? We've, we've got this TH that we've grouped here. We can also use T body to kind of group our data if we wanted to do that. And again, notice that doesn't really change much, but um, we can we can kind of put that in there for um, purpose of organizi organizing things. Okay, so you'll notice here that I have styled my table by giving it a width. If I don't put a width in here, you'll see that my table will shrink. It will shrink based on the width of the content. So you'll see that this first row it will only go up until the end of the content and it will immediately start that next content. So I can do a couple things. One, I specified a width of the table and that kind of spreads it out some. But another way that you can do this is you could also include like a padding on your TD. So maybe I want like a two pixel padding that kind of makes it a little further apart. Maybe let me go a little bit bigger than that. And so you can kind of see so you can you can change those um, the way the spacing goes with that or you can specify in the table a width so maybe I say 50% so it kind of gives it more maybe I can go even bigger 70% um, you'll notice that I have on my table a little bit of a margin in here so maybe I bring that down a little if I'm going to make it bigger so it kind of looks a little bit centered. Okay so this is my table um, let's let's do a real example so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an example of um, specifying some data on the average temperatures in San Francisco. Okay so I'm going to create a new table under the table that we're working with here so you can kind of get a, a good example. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create my T head. I'll do pretty much the same exact thing as this TH, and I'm going to say uh, month. So it's going to have the month, and then it's going to have the average temperature. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to do my T body. And I have, let's take a look at the first row. So my very first row, it's going to be a TR and then TD and that's going to say January and my next TD is going to be the temperature. So this is what I want to fill in. So you'll see, you know, let me put a little divider here in between these. So they're, okay. So I've got my month, my temperature. And I'm go I have recorded and written this data already. So here are all of my rows of data all the way up from January to December. And I'm just going to add that in here. All right, so let me make this look a little bit nicer. So now my, my code looks a little bit nicer and I can go ahead and make some changes. Now you notice what I have here is I have the months and I have the temperatures. Now if I wanted the months to be in bold I can very easily change these TDs to well THs that's gonna that's gonna make them white so I can um, create ID equals month and I can come up to my style sheet and put a a font weight of bold on there and so that can make my um, my months bold so if I do that though I have to apply that to every single one I'm copying and pasting, trying to save myself as much typing time and getting through the code quicker as possible. Okay, so there is that. Now, let's say 
I've decided I've got my average temperatures, but let's let's say I want it to be this is obviously the high temperature and this is the low temperature. Let's say I want to break this up into two separate um, cells. Okay, so right now they're currently sitting in one. So if I want to create a new cell here, let's see what happens. I'm going to move this 46 degrees and put it in here and get rid of the slash. Now you'll see what has happened is because this row has three uh, columns in it now, everything that we have created for every, every other row below it is going to fit into our our regular pattern and I can break these apart but what the table is trying to do is it's trying to to match the same um, definition as every other row so what we're trying to do here it's going to basically leave an empty spot for us to kind of fill in because this represents just one row now you'll notice what's happened here is my uh, heading only applies across this first, this middle TD. So if I want to make this average temperatures apply across both, I need to use something called a call span. Okay, and so if you've ever used like um, Excel and you kind of merge columns together, this is kind of the same idea. So let's take a look here. I've got this TH, call span equals two. And as soon as I do that, You'll see that now it goes across both both of my um, both of my uh, columns. Okay, now what if I want to have something underneath here then that says low and high? How can I do that? So to be able to do that, I can do a row span. Let me show you what that would look like. So let's say I have another. I need to put a TR in here. Missed my TR. Okay, so that is my first row. And what I want to do is I want to do a second row in here. But I don't want there to be anything sitting in, in this space. Okay, so I'm going to do a TH and I can leave it empty by putting a non-breaking space in here and BSP and my next one I could make this say high and low so I can do this oh, this kind of looks looks a little weird right now but I think it's just because my the way my row my my data looks. Okay, so I've got my average average temperatures, my high, my low, and you know what? I I don't like the month setting up there. I want the month to be at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the space, and instead of using call span, I'm going to use row span equals two. Okay, so row span equals two is going to kind of um, center it among those this these two rows, so that it kind of looks like it's in between both of those. I don't know that I'm that I necessarily love the way it looks, but that's what we're going to do just to show you what row span looks like. And then for me to fix all these, I have to add new TDs and fix the spacing on this and. It's a lot of work to work with work with tables, but once you get them organized the way you want, then it works out. Okay, so this is basically how tables work. Um, oh, one last thing I want to show you, and let me just pause and do all of these um, these changes here real quick, and then I'll show you the very last thing. Okay, so I have my my data looking a little bit nicer here and what I wanted to the last thing I want to show you is that you can use a tag called caption so I'm going to put that caption right here and the caption is going to kind of be the name of the table so let's say I want to do um, average temperatures in San Francisco California okay so you'll see right here that the oops that's 
sorry, that is not the caption, the table I wanted to put it on. I want to put it in this one. Okay, so average temperatures in San Francisco, California looks pretty good here. Um, I can always use my CSS to style that tag. So let's go ahead. What do I have here? I have a caption, Arial. Let's say I want to make this a little bit bigger. Just say two M's. That's a little too big. 1.7. That looks good. I can do a font weight of bold on here. Kind of make it stand out a little bit. I can change the color. So all of these things you can apply, um, but with the caption you can al always change it so it doesn't apply in the default section. So you can put the caption position down at the bottom. So if I did something like that, I can change that in my CSS. So let's take a look here. It's caption side. So it's by default it's top. I can put it to bottom if I really want to. Um, and you'll see what happens. Let me refresh my page. So here it is in the bottom. Obviously you probably don't want it to be like that big of a font. Um, and you can also apply a text align. So by default that alignment is going to be centered. Let me make the font a little smaller so you can see it. Um, let's say I just go down to 0.8. So see that's definitely much smaller and you can see that it's centered here. Then if I wanted to change the text alignment, I could just say text align equals right. So if you have like a little um, data table that you're creating and you just want to kind of have like a little bit of little mention at the bottom, you can do that or you can use that caption as kind of like a heading across it. Now please keep in mind that tables are not used for page layout. You do not want to use tables for page layout. Um, back in the day, say 20 years ago, before we really embraced CSS as the way to do uh, web design and page layout, uh, we use table layout. So we would create these crazy layouts using tables and we thought it was great and everything and now it is considered bad practice to use table layouts. Um, it has been for quite a while so please if you are in the habit or maybe you learned how to do um, web development in the past and you're coming back to it to refresh your skills please note we do not use table layout um, to lay out anything other than data. Okay, so have fun playing with HTML5 tables and styling them in CSS. Uh, you can definitely make things look good. Uh, don't just rely on the, you know, not styling the table at all because a, a table without style is a sad, sad table. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.